Welcome to lecture 32, Creating an Array. So we already discussed briefly what an array is, and I basically said that an array is a group of data. So if I have 10 separate integers, or 10 strings, or 10 bools, whatever it is, and I need to store all of those in, in a memory somehow with, with a variable, I can use an array, and that will group them all together so I can easily manage them, I can easily add more to the array, um, I can I can easily display them all and things like that and we'll get more into that in the next lectures but in this lecture we're going to look at how do we actually create an array what is the syntax and how do we access the separate elements which I'll go over in a second of the array so starting off with the syntax how do we create an array so remember how we create an integer so for example to create an integer we say int then the name of the data type, I mean, the name of the variable. So I'm going to say my int equals and a value. So in this statement, I'm saying I create a new spot in memory called my int that's allocated enough memory that can hold an integer and it, and it can only hold integer data. And the value that it's starting with, it's initializing with a five. So the value that's starting off with is a five and then a semicolon. So this is how you create a regular integer variable. But now, how do we create an integer array? So it's very similar. First, it's the data type. So integer array is it just a normal data type. It's just like int double bool. But it, the int versus int array, they're two separate data types. So an integer array data type looks like this. It's int and then open square bracket, close uh, square bracket. That represents an integer array. This is just a regular integer. They are different data types, even though they both say int. One is an array, and one is just an integer. The next thing is the actual name of the array. So I'm going to say my array is called my array, just like a regular variable. The next thing is the equal sign. So we're assigning it some kind of value. Now, this will be confusing for now until we get into classes. But for now, you just have to copy this and remember this, and you'll understand it eventually. So this has to use the new keyword and I'm going to show you other ways of doing this without the new keyword but for now we're going to use the new keyword and basically what you can think of that what that's doing is just it's allocating memory for many spots because the integer is just uh, allocating one spot we don't need to use new but you can think of it because we're using the array we have many integers we're going to use new now there's a lot more there's a bigger reason why we're using new it's actually allocating memory in a different spot these two variables, this is being allocated somewhere else, whereas this is being allocated on this new spot by using the new keyword. And we'll get into that when we talk about classes. So for now, just copy it. So this is how you create an array. So it's int array, then the name of the array equals new, and now I just restate what I'm creating. So I'm, I'm creating an integer array. However, in between these um, square brackets at the end of it, I put how many integers I want in this array. So if I put 10, that means that there are 10 integers inside of this array. So this is equivalent, this right here is equivalent to doing this and 10, whatever it is. So th having all these separate integers is the same thing as just making this one array. But watch how easy it is. Okay, I need 100 integers now. Boom. Now I have 100, 100 integers, just like that. Whereas if I was doing it the other way, I would have to keep on copying until I had 100 integers. Okay, now, now we're almost at the same thing. So that's how it works. An integer array is a group of integers, and that's exactly what I mean. This is this, all packed together in one tight entity. And we can use loops to really make it powerful. So that's how we create an, an array. But right now, our array is empty. It's just 100 integers, but they all have no values. That's basically creating integers like this. It's saying int x, semicolon. So all the integers inside of this array are just empty like this. They have no values. They have their default value, which is 0. So we actually need to give them some values if we want to have some values. So let's go ahead and make this maybe 3 in, in our array for now. So how do we access specifically all the elements in the array? So just some kind of terminology here. An element, when I say element, that means it's a separate integer in the array. Because this is an integer array, 
all my elements are the individual integers. So an element is the individual item in the array. The integer array is the entire thing itself. An index, another term, is an index. The index is the number that how we access it, and I'm talking about that now. So, how do we access it? We used its index, obviously. Because there's three integers in this array right now, I didn't give them all separate names, so what are the names of each integer inside of it? The only name I actually specified was the name of the array. So, by default, there are no names for all the integers in the array. They're just accessed by the position of them inside the array. For example, if I want to access the first integer in the array, I say my array, and I put these square brackets, and this is say this is sub. So I would say my array sub zero equals five or something like that. So what this is saying is get the first integer in the array and make it equal to five. So with arrays, we start at zero as being the first. So because there's three integers in this array, it's zero, one, two. Those are the three integer spots in the array. And all I'm doing is I'm just simply assigning the first integer in the array to the value of 5. But notice how it has no name. The first integer has no name. It's not like my int or x or y or z. I didn't give it a name. It just takes the name of the array and attaches its position in the array, and that's how you access the individual. That is equivalent. This is equivalent to going, you know, int x and then x equals 5 like that except there's many integers, so they don't have a name, I have to access it by the index. So that's the first value, then I'm going to say my array sub 1 equals 6, my array sub 2 equals 7. So I assigned all the three integers in this array a value, so now they all have some kind of value. If I wanted to maybe print out the first one, I can do console.write line my array sub 0. That's the same thing, it's just saying int, int x equals 5 and then console.write line x. It's the same exact thing. And I know the reason why I'm emphasizing this is because a lot of people that I tutor get confused in this. They don't understand that this is actually just an integer. It's not an array. This, I'm not passing in an array right here. I'm passing in a separate integer. This is just a regular integer. It's the first integer in this list of integers. And the first integer has the value 5. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And it says 5. Now, I told you I only declared three integers. And to prove that, I want to show you something. I want to try to say my array sub 3 equals 10. So this third slot, which is actually the fourth integer, doesn't exist. I only allocated memory for three of them. Using this new keyword, I only allocated three integers. But I'm trying to change the fourth, so let's see what happens. And I just want to show you that it crashes and it says the index, which is our number, like I said, is outside the bounds of the array. And that's basically what that says is that there's only three integers in this array and you're, you're going out of that bounds. You're crossing the boundary. There aren't any more integers, so you can't actually assign a value here because I didn't actually allocate any memory in RAM for it. The new is responsible for that RAM allocation and it didn't do any of it because you only told it to do three. So that's why we're getting an error there. So this is how I access the individual elements. I can change this to any of them. I can change this to a two. And now that should print seven because that's the third integer. So if I go run that, now it's printing seven. So up until now, you, you kind of see that we have to, you know, specify every single integer in the array separately. And we're going through saying five, six, seven on, on each individual element of the array. And you, you may be wondering, well, that's not that much bigger of a difference than just creating all separate variables. And yeah, you're sort of right, even though there still is some kind of benefits with this. You're sort of right. So in the next um, lecture, we're going to go ahead and look actually how we can make this more efficient and, and access all of these elements basically at the same time. But just before we do that, I want to show you a couple more ways that we can actually create an array. So this is just different initialization methods. So the first method was we create the raw array with three empty integers, and then we go and fill each element by ourselves. We go in and manually put them in. Another method we can do is we can say, now these are all basically just shorthands. I can say int 
my array two equals new int I'll say three again but now instead of going through them I can just put these curly braces and I can say five six seven now automatically it knows okay because I'm allocating this new int um, sub three it's saying five will go to the first element in the array six will go to the second and seven will go to the third it basically does this for you so this is a shorthand so you can even make it even a little bit shorter by simply taking out that so I'm going to add another line so this is another shorthand I can take out the three there because I'm telling it how many are here I'm saying these are the values of the array so I don't actually need to say three there because it knows it can count the five six and seven so it knows there's three so there's another shorthand version and then finally the shortest version you can actually even skip all this and then just say five six seven and that will create a new array with the first slot being five six and then seven this basically gets converted into this behind the scenes for you this is just a shorthand but you'll see that in the coming lectures that you only can do this sometimes but most of the times we have to do it manual manually like this and you'll see why that actually happens but even though when you're doing this, that new call, that call to new, is still being injected. It basically gets injected into this call, and new still gets called, and that memory still being allocated. It still does this. All of these three shorthands still do this, no matter what. And just to prove that we actually can access it, I'm going to say console.write line my array sub 4, and I'm going to do 1. So that should be this array and the second slot. 0, 1. It should print a 6. And it does. It prints that 6. So these are some kind of shorthands of creating arrays. And this is the manual way, which is the way that you'll see you'll be using quite often um, when you actually need user input. This only works when you're like messing around, but this really works when you're asking the user for input and then storing it into the array. And you'll see what I mean by that. So that's it for this lecture. The next lecture, we're going to look at using loops with arrays.